Hey fellow viewers, welcome back to another video and we have yet another install video and we got Let's Go Behind Us. If this is your first viewing experience, hi, I am Project R or Project Radium. This is my 2009 Honda Civic Si FA5. Um, her name is Nezuko. And this will be the last mod until we are full bolt on and we can go get myself an E-Tim, which means I would be done with power and we could work our way with like performance, like handling and wheels and stuff of that nature. Um, so finally we're going to be full bolt on and let me see what we got here. <laughs> so I went with K-Tuned, um, first K-Tuned mod on the car. We basically have Skunk 2 all the way around. Um, but we, I went with K-Tuned um, and let me tell you why. So this car is my daily. I drive her every single day. I drive her quite often. I've had her for about six months and I put about 11,000 miles on her. I drive her quite often and where I live is the Pacific Northwest where it rains constantly. So I can't afford to have a real cold air intake on this car. I really want it because the K-Series just likes as much air as possible, hence why we have the full three inch exhaust and alpha header on this car because they like the air. But I just cannot get a cold air. Um, I even emailed my tuner and he said basically it's a no-go. I should go short ram or drop in filter. Um, but most short rams on these cars suck. Most of them are turned around and are aiming towards your header. So you, they're soaking in a lot of hot air, not cold air like you know, you're supposed to. You know. um, if you're kind of new to the car community uh, or just into cars in general, hot air, not good. Uh, you want as cold air as possible. That's why uh, the fall season is really called boost season. Um, cold air the better and when a short ram is aiming at the header um, it's not real cold so it was really it was really hard for me to make a decision but I finally found my decision I had three options from my tuner he said either the k and Typhoon intake which is expensive and um, it's the only one that's like kind of good that aims towards the header because it has this little shielding apparently it's not that far off from stock um, or a, he said number two, or a drop-in filter, does pretty okay. Or the K-tuned three and a half inch short ram, uh, which I did. Which is, what makes this one special from the rest is the short ram aims towards the headlight, which means it's basically following the same trajectory as a cold air intake, but it does not flow down all the way into the fender or down at the bottom. So I'm not going to be getting water. It's still staying up high, but in fact, it's gonna be behind the uh, behind the headlight and far away from the header. So we're gonna get more, we're gonna get colder air and we're gonna get more air because this is gonna be, this is a three and a half inch intake, just like the cold air intakes. Um, so yeah, um, you need Honda data for this. If you wanna install this yourself, um, you can get the three inch short ram and you do not need Honda data. You could just use a little vent and keep the vacuum Ports closed, I'm pretty sure, on the intake. Not 100% though. But if you get a three and a half, you do need uh, data. But we do have on data. We already have a Skunk 2 off a header and a Skunk 2 Mega Power um, RR exhaust. So let's put on this intake. I'm going to take you along for the ride. Let's do this thing. I am really excited. All right. Um, I do want to show you the contents of the box as well. So this is what the short ram intake is going to get you from k -Tune. Everything in here. And there is options for a V-Stack, which I did not go with. Because again, I'm not getting to cold air. I don't need that. Um, there is options between stock throttle body and J35 and the, another one, like a, a bigger one. Like there's, there are K-Tuned ones. So that's cool. And also there's an option for upper radiator hose which you will need for this install because the stock one will no longer work because we're relocating it so I did that it's an extra like $40 it's quite ridiculous for a hose but I mean here we are these are some vacuum hoses that you need for when you have hot data when you have the three and a half so we will be using those and important this is something really important as well this is the battery relocation since the battery is literally where the intake is going, you're going to need to relocate the battery. So this is the battery relocation. I'll set it right there. And there also are is the hardware for that as well. This is for when for the cold air, um, but we're not going to be having that, of course. Here is the for the cold air. 
This is that elbow for the cold air to go downwards. I'm pretty sure we don't need that because again, we're not going cold air. But this is for our short ram right here. I'm not sure what, I'm pretty sure this side goes into the throttle body. And then we got the big one for the big hose, the small one for the smaller one. Um, and then this is for your MAF sensor or your MAP sensor. I always forget them. And this is not plastic. This is a uh, actual, this is actual metal. Like it's not plastic. So it's like, it's actually not like one of those like cheap eBay made intakes. So it's actually quite well done. Um, and obviously we got our cabinets here. This is for, you know, everything. That middle one is for the throttle body. That's the throttle body uh, coupler, coupler there. And there's some clamps. You got some stickers, hardware for the battery location. You got yourself a filter for the intake, of course. This is the filter for the vent. Like if you had, the, if you got the three inch and you need to, uh, and you need to have that on your valve cover. And they gave you a, a license plate frame, which is pretty cool. I don't have one, so guaranteed I'm going to be putting that on. So yeah, guys, that's the contents of the box. It's a pretty good kit um, looking at it. I've had some good experience, a lot of good experiences with K-Tune, and then some, some eh ones. So let's see how this goes. Um, I will see you in the install. The engine opened, stock intake. First step is we're going to be removing the battery because the battery is going to be relocated. The intake is going to be sitting where the battery is. So that is going to be relocated. So we'll take the battery out and take the intake off. Don't forget your MAF sensor and some lines. All right, the battery out. You just want to remove this tray here. Just two bolts from what I understand. It's just two bolts and a clip. So remove the tray. All right, guys, a little update. Um, intake is out. Um, these hoses are a little confusing. Um, this this one right here is going to be the big hose on the intake kit that's going to go to your intake. And then I believe this one right here that goes here will be the little one, I think. We'll have to figure that out. There is one more going to the throttle body for coolant that feeds into this, I think. So I'm going to have to figure that out. That's the thing I'm confused about. Battery's out. And battery trays out. This the tray was right here. The mount mounts right here, um, like alongside. But you have to take out this piece. So, some tubing. So there's that. Um, update. So you are gonna have to take the tire off. That's what I'm in the middle of doing right now to get the rest of the intake piping out because the uh, battery location is gonna be in the way. The piping's in the way. And there's a bolt right under the fender liner. So that's frustrating. So I do wanna. Uh, I do want to talk about this. Okay, these these hoses here. So this is our coolant line that's already leaking a little coolant actually. Um, but it follows here down right to right here on the throttle body. And so we're gonna use that. We're gonna use the little hose that I don't know where it went. <laughs> we're gonna use that the, that hose for that. And uh, so this hose, the stock one, is going to actually go onto the intake. And then that big one is going to be the same spot. So just so you know, this, so far, is what it seems like. The one going to the throttle body is what we're gonna be using that little hose for. Um, and then we're going to keep the stock hose, just so you guys know that. All right, update. Got the tubing out. Um, it's really annoying. You're gonna have to pull, take the wheel off, jack it up, pull back the fender liner, and then pull out the side of the bumper here. Um, really annoying. Next up, you want to drain your coolant. Just like that, because um, the coolant line, this coolant line here, is going to have to be replaced because it is going to get in the way. So we're replacing it with a K24 coolant line that got, was supplied in the kit. If it, you got the optional piece, which you need to, so a little update video. Um, we put the new hose in under the throttle body here, rerouting it over there. And that's to replace this one um, that you don't need with the hard lines. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then now we're going to be putting in the battery tray and over the intake, and that'll be it. All right, update. Uh, we got the MAF sensor on uh, the intake. You just take it from the stock one and put it on the intake itself. Pretty self-explanatory. And we got the battery mount in there now. Kind of annoying. There's a lot of like wires and looms and stuff. You kind of. Kind of got to wiggle all the way, but it's in. 
Um, so up next is putting the battery in and getting the intake on. So, hell yeah. All right, we're back. Um, I'm actually getting the intake on now. Um, got that hose going to, well, I think it's a PCV valve probably down there. Um, and then we got our coolant hose going to the throttle body underneath. And this big long one um, will be going from here up to the vent here. And if you have a three inch, um, you're gonna keep this capped off and you're gonna just put a little vent that comes in the box there instead. But if you have if you have the three and a half or Flash Pro, you're gonna want to vent it with the, the hose. But we're gonna have to trim it because there's a lot of extra hose there. All right, update. Uh, we got the intake on here. Um, got all hoses. We're filling up coolant now. Um, since you're supposed to drain it. I think I forgot to say that. Battery's down there now, looking really good. And look at that, shifter cables are exposed, so if you want to do your shifter and stuff, right there. So, only thing left, antifreeze. Um, might need to have to do a reflash on Hondata to tell it that, like, hey, this is, this is here now. But otherwise, um, that's it, guys. Alright, so we got it on. Um, we're gonna try a test, test start, see how it runs. It might need a reflash. Um, because of the cold air intake. It's another day. Um, apparently I have to take this part of the video like five times because either it's not filming or I got animals photobombing my videos like normal. <laughs> if you're on this channel a lot, you know that. <laughs> but here we are. It's been a few days. Um, intakes in. You might not be able to see it real well, but at least you saw it in the install. So I can't really show you the ending that I was really hoping to show you with it fully done and running on the base map without a tune and stuff like that. That's not really the happy ending I had in mind. In fact, I'm not even gonna be able to drive it to work tomorrow, instead drive someone else's, and that sucks, and I am sorry, and thank you for letting me drive it, because man, it sucks. Um, <laughs> but really, that's what, just what happens, um, especially intakes on these cars, when they get this new 2009, you know, um, they start getting newer, and technology is more advanced, and things are just not the same as they were in the 90s on my EG you know, where it's easy and just do it, put it on and it's done. These, you know, have computers and the math sensors are easily tricked. Um, I, I drove it today, which is two days later from when you guys were watching me install it. And it just wasn't having it, man. Uh, I'm going, math sensor was freaking out. I had base maps. I had multiple. I was making sure I had the right stuff. And it was, wor it was working for a while, but eventually it just had enough. It's just too much air for it, man. And, uh, it wouldn't, VTech was very unhappy. It felt like it was kind of pulling timing or something like that. I'm not a huge, like, tuning guy. I'm not sure, but it just wasn't right. I just, I, I know that. Um, so I had to just bite the bullet and realize that it's not going to happen. So I'm in the middle of tuning it right now, e-tuning by uh, Yash Tuning uh, in Texas, I think. Um, he's seeming to be really good. He does a really fantastic job. Um, put his Instagram right here so you guys can see that. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job. I just did Tune 2, um, and he's working on Tune 3. I'll we'll probably do that tomorrow. So it just isn't capable of doing that right now. Um, and I, I'm here three days later, just, or two days later, just because of technical issues. So, man, I'll tell you what. My Honda was a big problem. Big part of it. Um, my Hyundai was on a recent version that I thought was a production version. It really is a beta, and that's the problem because apparently it's having a lot of issues on this beta, as I could see, um, because it was not working properly. Um, I realized when we were flushing the coolant that night that you guys saw, um, while we were flushing the coolant, obviously it had a big air bubble in there somewhere, so just it was starting to overheat. Um, nothing major, just a little bit, you know, because there was, it wasn't heat, reading the heater core either, because it was still blowing cold air, um, but things started to get hot. Uh, I had a Honda data going so I could see the temperature, and it hit 205, 206, you know, a little hotter than I would like, 
Um, and the fans weren't kicking on. I had the fans to kick on at 199. Obviously, it's six degrees past that at that point. So, ended up turning it off. Did it again. Turn, weren't, fans weren't turning on. So, the fans were not turning on no matter what I did. Um, I had to, next day, reinstall the old version. And that pretty much fixed it. Um, and also, note to self, guys, when you're doing this, turn off the secondary coolant temp sensor. Um, that seems to be causing a problem as well. Um, and I'll tell you why. The secondary coolant temp sensor, which is the main one that controls the fans, is at the bottom of the radiator, um, which is all cool and dandy, but it's not the one in the engine, um, which means it's usually about 10 to 20 degrees colder in here than it is in here. So if your car's starting to overheat in here, it says it's 205 degrees, then it's probably 215 to, oh man, hopefully you're not in the 225s, you know what I mean? So that is not what I want. So I disabled the secondary coolant sensor. So when it says 200 degrees, it's 200 degrees in the engine and not in the coolant. Um, so that seemed to help my, my fans turn kick on at like 201 now. And they turn off at like 193 or 192. So it's really good now. And um, as of the intake, from what I seen before, really started not doing well, was it's doing a fantastic job. It's hitting 50 to 60 to higher 60 degree intake temps, which is crazy. Um, it is keeping things very cool and it's doing a really, really good job. I imagine that's a lot colder than it would be if it was facing the header. I could just imagine that. And I'm curious to know what a, uh, a cold ram, a cold air would do, because um, that seems cold already. So <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, but otherwise, I, I just want to say thank you guys um, for sticking around. At, at the time of recording this right now, I have 373 subs, which is close to 400 subs. And I can't believe I have that many that want to watch me and watch me talk and learn um, about this car as we go because this is really my first like just from total scratch car kind of newer car um, and it's a big learning curve learning the K-Series is way different and really cool so I can't thank you guys enough it's really cool that I have an outlet to teach and show you guys and learn with you guys and just kind of be dumb kind of Bursting out of my shell a little bit more, getting more comfortable talking to a camera. It's been a little weird, but I'm getting there. Um, I'm a lot more, a lot more out there in, uh, in real life than I am on camera, and I hope to to show you guys that. So hopefully we can get me on the channel more as well. But it just she's been blowing up since I started the channel. Like right when I started it, she blew up. Really, I only have one video on my channel with her or two, um, and that sucks. Um, Cause next. Next videos you guys are going to see, she's going to be full bolt on and tuned. So I'm going to have some videos on that. And we get some coils and some wheels and a stereo. And hopefully I can get I can get Mia going and go full race car with her, you know. So I'm really excited. I just want to say thank you if you made it this far. Thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't, go ahead and do that. I have way more planned. Um, I upload every week. And if I don't, it's because I have something more better planned. Um, I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all greatly and uh if you're struggling with if you're struggling with your bills i understand stay committed as uh robbie fear would say what a shame he's not on the platform anymore hope to see you back someday buddy um just breathe realize everyone has the same stuff as you man everyone has the same stresses and uh i hope you have a great day um and peace out guys